Chapter 2 Riley It was a rather nice day out, at least I'd like to think so. There was a light breeze and the sun wasn't beating down on the field. It was a great day for the kids to be out and active, keep their minds off of the fact they saw a police patrol car out front earlier. I still had no idea what could have happened. I just knew the officer had walked into Miss Price's classroom. At least, that was the gossip in the halls. I pushed said rumors into the back of my mind. Now was the time to focus on my team and soccer. They had a huge game coming up soon, and it was late practice for everyone. I stood back, observing my students as they practiced their dribbling and passing. They were set on two different teams, and I was keeping score. It was about time for them to take a breather, so I blew my whistle, signaling for them to stop. All right, guys, why don't you go all get a drink and relax for a good ten minutes, I told them. They all cheered and clapped with excitement as they ran off the field towards their bags on the bleachers. I took this time to look over the paperwork on my clipboard. I had written out some very interesting notes about what needed to be worked on for this upcoming game. I was going over the different options in my head when one of the girls squeaked out from nearby. No way! Are you serious? I don't make it my hobby to listen in, but now my curiosity was piqued. Yeah, it's totally true. I heard it from a girl in my class. The other night, some of the boys snuck out of their houses and encountered a real-life vampire. He had fangs and everything. The girl whispered quietly to her friend. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah, right. That's not even true. Vampires aren't real, her friend said. Oh, if only they knew. I would hope that those boys didn't see a vampire. If they did, I wondered what vampires would be doing here. It might be something I'd have to look into. I'd have to let my parents know to bring it up at the next meeting. Vampires in our territory couldn't be a good thing. I had to cut their break short with a whistle, keeping the vampire discussion in the back of my mind for the time being. Eventually, practice came to an end, and I waited patiently for each child's parents to show up before heading home myself. It was already pretty late into the evening, and the sun was going down. I usually had a rather strict schedule of exercise and stretches, but late on practice days, I kind of just let it all slide. Don't want to overwork the body, after all. I walked to my car, rummaging through my sports bag for keys. When I found them, I unlocked my door and slid inside the driver's side. So much had gone on today, with an officer showing up at school and gossip of vampires. It wasn't related, but it made me worry. I had a feeling I should call my mom. I pulled my phone from my bag and dialed the familiar number. Hello, sunshine, my mom's sweet voice chirped in my ear. My mother was Joyce Tesler, head reporter for Kingsland Newspaper, Kingsland, North Dakota, the small town where we lived. Hey, mom, how are things going? I replied back, not missing a beat. A smile came to my lips. It was always nice to hear her voice. My mother and I were very close, and even after I moved out to be on my own, I made a habit to call when I could. Things are fine, dear. Same old, same old. So, is something on your mind? She asked, getting right to the point for me. I chuckled at that. Of course, she was as sharp as ever. Actually, yeah. I wanted to know a few things about the old vampire tale you used to tell me, I said, leaning back in the driver's seat. My mother sighed, and I could hear rummaging in the background. Riley, sweetheart, the story is more than a tale. It's 100% true. Really? So the curse is real, then? The reason they are what they are? I asked, brushing a loose strand of black hair behind my ear. Well, of course. Why else would I tell you something so serious? We don't know what they will do, or if they remain bitter all this time, my mother replied. Well, thinking back on that now, my mom and dad never let me play outside in the dark. I now fully understood until the day my mom told me the story. It became a ghost story told to all Wiccan younglings in this small town. Story goes that long ago, witches were hunted and burned just for being born with magic, starting in good old Salem. In charge of those trials was a group of judges who sentenced a bunch of innocent witches and humans to death. As revenge for their fallen friends and family, a small group of witches rose up, casting a dark curse upon the judges. A curse from the dark book, the Book of the Goddess. The curse made the judges live forever without a soul, and gave them a thirst that only human blood could satisfy. It was a way to make them live with their sins and suffer for all eternity in an ever-changing world of loneliness. In my opinion, I always found it pretty sad, but the scary part 
was that if a little witch went out at night, they would be taken and eaten by the eternal judges as revenge for their curse. Though honestly, I'm not sure that part was true, since I never came across a vampire. Mom, I just don't know if someone could hold so much bitterness for so long. I know I couldn't. Life is too short to be so dark and sad. Surely they wouldn't really harm innocent children, right? I asked her. Also, how did the witches get a hold of the Dark Book? Isn't it protected by the pathfinders of each coven? For us, life is short, but they have an eternity to feel whatever they want. The pathfinder of that coven was killed, which is how the other witches got a hold of the Dark Book. It's protected by the prices now. My mother paused before continuing. Sweetheart, did something happen? Was a child hurt? She seemed a bit panicked now. No, no, Mom. I'd just heard some rumors, is all. Overheard some of the girls saying that someone met a vampire with real fangs and everything. I haven't seen anything myself. I reassured her with a small smile. Still, it might be worth a mention at the next meeting, Sunshine. So please fill me in on what you know. I told my mom everything I knew and heard about the vampire sighting and how I was feeling a bit uneasy. Well, don't worry too much, Riley. Just stay cautious and I will bring this up at the next gathering just to be safe. She told me. I nodded more to reassure myself. All right. Thank you, Mom. I'll let you go now. I love you. I spoke softly. I love you too, dear. She responded before we hung up. That's one thing I always loved about my mom. No matter how small or how big the danger was, she always took me seriously and she always listened. I could count on her. I set my phone aside and decided to finally drive home. Vincent. I stared in the mirror. My reflection revealed a man with slicked back black hair and tired, dull blue eyes. He wore all black, a formal business suit, seemingly familiar yet not, someone forced to be something they didn't wish to be. Mr. Cassio? One of the housekeepers called as she tapped against my door. I stood before my mirror, adjusting my black tie so it was nice and straight. This formal attire wasn't my style, but I had no choice. Come in, Marie, I answered, turning my attention towards the shy, petite maid as she entered the room. She was one of the newest recruits to the housekeeping staff, so timid and kind, it was only a matter of time before my mother ran her off like she did to the others. Your mother and father are waiting for you downstairs, she informed me. I will be down in a few moments, thank you, Marie, I nodded, before turning away again. She closed my door and I sighed, running my fingers through my hair. That was never good. Normally my parents did not wait for me. What could my mother possibly want? It took a few moments to talk myself into leaving my room. I grabbed my school bag and headed out the door. We had a set of steps and an elevator in our huge house. I preferred the stairs to get some form of exercise in. I was headed towards the steps when the elevator doors opened and my sister stepped out. Brittany saw me and shot an icy cold glare in my direction. I gave her a small nod as if to greet her, before heading down. She huffed loud enough for me to hear it. It was hard to believe that at one point in time we used to race each other down these steps. I could not recall the last time she actually said anything to me. As I reached the bottom of the steps I was greeted by my mother, who instantly began straightening out my jacket and tie. Vincent, dear, you cannot leave the house looking so sloppy. Also, don't forget you have piano lessons and a language lesson right after your class ends today, she reminded me as she made my already tight tie tighter. Yes, mother, I know. Thank you, mother, I said, trying to breathe while my throat was being constricted. She backed away with a confident smile that didn't light her cold, hazel eyes. There, that's better. Now you look like a true Cassio, she said, her hands on her hips as she looked me over with a disapproving look. Now, if only you didn't wear so much black, then you would stand out like your sister, she said, crossing her arms over her chest. Here we go again. Comparing to my older sister was my mother's favorite form of insult. I had once overheard her ranting to father about how she wished it had been me who was born without powers. I was just not the child she favored, so I wasn't even going to touch on the subject. Mother, black is a very nice and serious color. It shows that I'm reliable. Don't you agree, father? I asked as I turned my attention to my dad. He sat in the dining room reading the paper. He glanced up at me and nodded before getting back to his reading. All I could ever see over the newspaper was his graying hair. 
Didn't he have anything to add to the conversation? He was here, too. Maybe Mother just wanted to show a united front. With that, I headed for the front door, but Mother caught my wrist. Vincent, soon you will have to step up and become more involved in this family. You're the image of us, since your sister can't be. The next generation of Cassio blood. Do not forget that title, and do not forget we are conquerors. We cannot be left in the shadows, she said darkly. I hate when she got like this. This must have been why she and father were waiting for me. A friendly reminder before class today. How lovely. I understand my status, mother, and my role as well. I do not need to be reminded, I replied as I pulled from her grasp and slipped through the door quickly. Today would be a long day for me. I could feel it. I attended a private business college known as Crawwell University. I was majoring in law and minoring in business management. It was not something I enjoyed, but my parents set up everything for me. I was not allowed to say no. Mother only wanted what was best for her, but it was hard when I was not Brittany Cassio. Both my parents and my sister were very dominant and business-oriented. They do whatever they feel helps them gain more power. I, on the other hand, did not really wish to stand out or to gain notoriety. None of that stuff ever really appealed to me. My older sister would have been perfect to be the next head of the family. She was a clone of my parents, but was born without magic, which my mother considered taboo. I would enjoy a much more simple and quiet life by myself, had only my sister been gifted the magic. I had arrived at school, making my way through the front gate. I could already feel eyes on me and hear the sound of voices, whispering my family name like it's forbidden to say aloud. I walked with my head down and a book in my hand, pretending to scan the words on the page, but in reality I was listening. My family was scary and prestigious. We were wealthy and strong-willed, a family that no one dared to challenge. Though the prices did put my mother in her place, we were not allowed to discuss them. It would send my mother into a rage. Vincent, 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 a female voice called, trying to get my attention. I slowly looked up, seeing three girls standing at the doors to the school. Their faces were red and their eyes hopeful. I stopped at the bottom of the steps. I was not in the mood. Can I help you? I asked, looking up at them. Well, we were wondering what your plans were after class ended. Do you maybe want to catch a movie or have dinner with us? One of the girls blurted out, holding her books to her chest. She seemed excited for my answer. Was I being asked out? My mother would have my head if I brought any of these ladies to meet her. In her eyes, they would not be good enough to even speak the family name. I am sorry I will have to decline. I have piano lessons and a language lesson after my classes end. I really have no time for those things. I told them as I closed my book, heading up the stairs. Oh, come on, one of the girls whined as she reached out, wrapping her arms around mine. I felt my entire body stiffen and my heart stop, dropping into my stomach. I felt queasy. The walls seemed to close in on me and my tie felt tighter, constricting me. I couldn't breathe. The group of women seemed to crowd around me, their eyes begging me to reconsider. No, I'm sorry, I really can't. Ask someone else, I responded hastily, pulling my arm away and shoving myself through the entrance of the school. I pushed my uneasy feelings deep down as I ran down the halls to get to my class. I hated people touching me, and I hated feeling so confined. I quickly slipped my fingers into the knot of my tie to pull it loose. Though I hated these classes, I could keep up just fine with them. My grades were excellent and exceeded expectations. I was well liked by the teachers and dean. So much so, they even let me get away with a lot of things, such as sleeping in class or reading my books. Other than that, classes were full, and the people were overbearing. I just wanted to be left alone, and I wanted to rule my own life, but the schedule created for me would not allow it. When classes ended, I immediately returned home to a big lonely mansion where my teachers awaited to start my lessons. I ended up running my fingers along the keys, playing a difficult tune that filled the air. Then after that, I memorized or repeated a beautiful language until it stuck in my brain. I had a knack for retaining anything I learned. Finally, I had dinner alone. Vincent Cassio, in a successful business school with teachers who knew his potential for greatness. Vincent, the guy who is refined, plays music, dances, and even speaks so many different languages. Vincent Cassio, the next generation of the family's success. This is the Vincent I was molded to be by my family. This was not the Vincent I was.